If you've ever watched anime at any point in your life, whether you just happened to catch a brief passing glance at One Piece, or religiously watched every single solitary episode of Tekka Man, odds are you've been caught up in the eternal debate that looms darkly and menacingly over the medium like a cancerous growth on a vital organ. Which is better, subs or dubs? Well, like half the second season of Haruhi Suzumiya, it doesn't matter, it's ultimately a waste of time, and you'll just end up repeating yourself to the point of redundancy. You can argue and bicker all you like, but no amount of convincing debate or detailed analysis can best the power of personal preference. Yes, the only thing that matters in this meaningless ongoing war is what you think about subs and dubs. So here's what I think about subs and dubs. Admittedly, I subscribe to the sub side of the fence more often than club dub. Reason being is because I'm an insufferable anime purist snob, but there's more to it than just that. I feel like the original Japanese actors usually give more effort, and perhaps have a deeper connection to the source material, which usually leads to giving better performances than the English dub. And depending on the quality of localization and the material, there will, inevitably, be certain anecdotes and other references that may end up being lost in translation due to many of the hidden subtleties that Japanese is characteristic for. I mean, I've studied the language in college, not to mention Japanese literature in general, and to me, subs offer great study guides and help strengthen the- OH GOD I'M A FILTHY WEEABOO JUST FUCKING SAID YOU BASTARDS I KNOW YOU'RE ALL THINKING IT BUT YOU FUCKING KNOW I DON'T EVEN CARE ANYMORE- But that's really my opinion, and nothing is ever absolute. Everything is usually case by case. Qualities of either dub depend on the Japanese actors, the English dubbers, the production companies, the source material, and a whole bunch of other things. I mean, I've seen shows where the English dub is superior to the Japanese dub, or otherwise just sounds better in English. I've seen shows where both dubs are just fantastically done for their own reasons. And I've seen shows where both dubs are total fucking garbage. So, picking size is incredibly pointless after all. Really, it all comes down to having that sacred seven-letter word. Options. Is that seven? Yeah, okay. If you have options, then you please everybody. Who cares about what's better or worse if you have both options? It doesn't matter! That's like saying this pair of shoes is better than that pair of shoes! I own both pairs, why take sides at all? But I'm not here to take sides. I'm here to talk about those options. No wait! I'm here to talk about not having those options! Today, we now have more options than we ever did before. With advances in home media technology, better worldwide connection thanks to the internet, and... Well, the fact that it isn't 1997 anymore, anime has been positively thriving exponentially in the past couple of decades. I mean, look at all this shit! So many options! With a click of a single button, I'm the master of my own destiny! Subs? Dubs? Why, I could even mute the damn audio if I want! I can have my own shitty dub! <laughs> Why even have an argument about subs or dubs at all?! Well because sometimes you still don't have the option. Even with all these amazing technical advancements, there's still going to be times where you have no options over whether you get the subbies or the dubbies. I mean, if you pay eight bucks for Hulu or Netflix or Orange Hulu, you've got immediate access to literally decillions of anime. I think that's right. Well, anyway, most of the time, you're logged into only one version of the anime. Not like it's a problem for me, since it's mostly in subs anyway. <laughs> but regardless on your place in the field, that's an option taken away from all of us, the viewers. That's a performance not being shown by actors who probably worked really hard, and now nobody gets to see it. And that's not right. But hey, that's just streaming sites, one might say. Having a language option is common. You pay for super and they get so fucking much for your dollar as it is, maybe they can have that right to withhold a fucking language option too. Besides, that's no different from what we used to watch anime on television. Hell, we still watch anime on cable all the time. We never complain before our sins. Go buy the official release if you're going to make some shit about it. Go talk about first world fucking problems. Yeah, sure, that's right. In an agreeably less vulgar sense, certainly. But we live in 2016 now. Things are a little bit different. Even if you go to the cheap route and stream your anime through Crunchyflix or Netlu, you've indeed got more anime than red blood cells. So to handle such a dearth of content, certain liberties they take can be understood. Understood. Multiple languages be damned. Fine, you get what you pay for. Long live capitalism and all that good stuff, blah blah blah. But what if I really, really want to go see the English dubs of something like, uh, I don't know, Clanad Afterstory, one of my all time true legit favorite animes? I mean, I don't, that dub is fucking atrocious, like steak knives in my cochlea. But what if I did? All the streaming sites usually just have the subbed version, and I don't dare pirate my anime or something equally as ghastly. So what to do? Well, my friends, that's what the home release is for! Right? I mean, if I buy complete seasons of an anime, not only will I have it forever, but I'll be buying a full, complete, unabridged package. 
with all the awesome language options and freedoms I want, right? WRONG! Even then you still get shunted to the language options! These evil, malicious corporations that rather instead of focusing on a free world unfettered by language barriers, they release their animes with only one language, forcing their xenophobic agenda down our throats in an attempt to snuff our individuality and grab their misguided beliefs on top of our own, and slamming us like we're some kind of uneducated, remorseless- You know, that's probably going a little overboard, let's dial it back. Let me try again. <clears throat> Anime is fucking expensive! Yeah, that about covers it. Whether you buy, or more accurately, sell half your relatives to be able to afford, home release anime, you expect to get the full experience. All the episodes, all the content, all the languages, all the options, all the everything. Ideally. Yet, sometimes, rarely, publishers tend to lock consumers out of their much-deserved options by including only one language option for stupid, undeserved reasons. Reasons like there's no market for a dub, or we don't have the rights, or there is no godly way to translate this without hours and hours of footnotes for every scene, or this was made in 1965. You don't see such limitations imposed too often these days, thanks to Blu-ray and more collaboration between production and localization companies and such, but it still exists in this world. Home video releases that cost an arm and a goddamn leg without those precious options we oh so crave. Aha! Now we're getting to the heart of the matter. The true meaning behind this whole thing. I mean, this is still a thing, right? Hello? Are, are we even still talking? Are you still talking about anime anymore? Observe as I present several examples of anime physical home releases without those precious language options to show just how few our options really are. Here we go! Exhibit A. Tenshi Universe. This is another one of my all-time favorites. I used to watch this every single day on Cartoon Network's Toonami, even taping it on the days I couldn't watch it in time so I could catch up. Hell, this is one of the few examples of an English dub being quite good for an anime circa 2000. But for this 2007 Genion release of Tenshi Universe, you can see on the back that they only have the... Oh wait, it has both. Well okay, bad example, bad example. Let's try another one. Exhibit A Prime. GTO! Great Teacher Onizuka is another great anime with another great English dub. Uh, super funny with a great sense of humor, dramatic and emotional at times, wonderfully rounded characters, it's great. Highly recommended, sadly underrated. But this is another 2007 release from Tokyo Pop this time, and as you can see, the Japanese dub is nowhere to be f- Hmm, this also has both. Damn, I'm mistaken again! Okay, okay, one more. Exhibit A Double Prime! Kaze no Yojimbo! Yeah, here we go. More obscure territory. This is an anime very, very, VERY loosely based on Akira Kurosawa's 1961 samurai film, Yojimbo. And, uh, something of the- something this unheard of naturally has... both language types. Huh, of course. Here's the first two Death Note movies, also recommended. These being live-action movies with Japanese actors being all Japanese and shit, there's no way that they can have an English dub. Huh. An English dub. In fact, it's from the same actors who did the anime's dub. Wait, I actually really, really like the dub for these movies. Okay, another bad choice, shit! I'm a man in black! You know the man in black is a guy- Whoa, Jesus Christ, that's way too many options! Get that out of here! How about this? I don't even know what show this is. Okay, Dragon Pink. Yeah, this is a fucking hentai. There's no way that this can have- Oh man, really? There's an English dub to this? Wait, it's in English? Porn has options? This I gotta see! Hmm? I don't need your business here. We don't serve cat sluts. Now get out! Oh god, why does it have options? This is a terrible idea! But uh, Invader Zim? This has options, right? Fucking Urkin? Seriously? Just make it a pig land and Esperanto then, why don't ya? The Kagero Diary! This- wait, this is a book. I am losing my mind. With its shitty fucking English dub, of course! Man, there's gotta be something here that shows off only one language option for a home release just to show how trapped we really are as a society. What the fuck? Huh. Hey, I got an idea! Dragon Ball Z! Shit! How about Ringu? This is the American version! This is a blank disc! Okay, I think I finally found it. Exhibit Double Q. Seven Samurai, 
another Kurosawa film. It's pretty decent, but would you expect this black and white 1954 Japanese film to have an English dub, right? Well, looky here! Yeah. See that? Seems the snobs at Criterion have unfairly locked us out of a proper Dolby 5.1 surround English dub for Seven Samurai. They're not giving us any options at all. Nowhere at all do you see any options at all. What a ripoff. And there you have it. Proving once and for all that subs are better than dubs. April Fools!